down. Now, uh, I would like to introduce Richard uh, Petrie uh, and just to say some words. To work on construction projects, to do planning, um, to build, to maintain. As I said, you need, as I said earlier today, you need a common way of doing things. So, f starting from the market, this has grown and grown and grown. And there have been key people involved in trying to get standards on how to do things. No matter what country you're in in the world now, building smart, the building smart standards is there and it's been used more and more. So now as the, as the projects more and more are digitized, they are asking for ways of working. And that's where you need open standards to help you in your day-to-day -day business. So Richard Petrie is leading Building Smart, so the floor is yours, Richard. Uh, thank you very much, Lars. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I always enjoy coming back to Oslo. It's a country I've visited many, many times, but it's interesting that in many ways you've been, played a leading role in the development of, of these digital standards for, for Open BIM. And so it's interesting to come here and get a, a feel for, if you like, the tempo and development uh, here, here in Norway. Uh, what I'm going to give you today is a, is a kind of an overview of where we are with Building Smart, some of uh, our sort of range of activities and uh, an insight into our plans. I, I just, this is a, a summary that I use quite frequently as a sort of everything in one page. The key point I really want to start with is that our values are open, neutral, not-for-profit in an, an international organisation. Uh, and that sort of not-for-profit international status is one of the sort of key, uh, well, a key value, key part of the proposition that, that is really providing the comfort area for people to come together and share their work on an open, neutral basis. So it's a very important underlying standard. Um, the organisation has been around since 1995, and it is the organisation that has developed the IFC standards and taken them through to ISO and is looking to maintain that role and take it forward. So the track record is also a key foundation pillar, and as is the extensive um, list of international network. Uh, these chapters are our, our sort of sisters, brother and sister organisations in different countries around the world, and our relationships with key standards bodies worldwide. So, sort of in a in a summary, you know that that is our footing. Um, before I get into talk, on to talking more about us, I'd like to sort of give a perspective on, on user benefits and needs. And the, the, I, I certainly feel that the sort of high-level strategic argument for do we need open standards and is BIM going to help, actually many people are buying into that. That argument, to me, feels as if it's essentially won now. The, in the... Uh, now, probably 18 months ago, there were 34 public sector mandates asking for open BIM. We see year on year the uptake of, of ordinary BIM, if, if you like, not necessarily open, but ordinary BIM is increasing year on year. And this image on the right is the ISO um, TF02, Task Force 02 uh, roadmap work that they're doing. And right in the heart of that is the IFC. So my point is that people are recognising the, the, the big high-level picture. There is much to be done to make this practical and useful to everybody in their everyday work. But I think, um, you know, that said, there are reports now, and you know, this is from Dodge Data and Analytics, you know, demonstrating some of the sort of productivity and program gains that kind of have been promised and expected from BIM. So some of the some of the wins that are expected, the value proposition are indeed coming through. Now, what, sort of, what are the people's ambitions now? And what you find is when you look beyond that sort of high-level case, it gets quite detailed. And this is, this is actually the agenda from an, an infrastructure conference on digitization. And the sort of main headings are, that how, do, how do they manage digital relationships with customers? We're talking about road, rail. Um, you know, how do we deal with real-time operating networks, and, and, and how do we transform the infrastructure delivery? 
Now, these are all things that are big questions and span a lot of, you know, a lot of the life cycle and a, a, a broad spectrum of the, of the supply base, supply chains. So these aren't, aren't narrow challenges, that's one point. And then looking at perhaps more specifically at construction, we see that there are, and, and this is an example from one particular European uh, large construction company, but you know, these are the, their sort of the digitization targets that they are trying to develop in-house as the sort of service proposition they want to provide. Uh, and it's, you know, th these are important uh, workflow processes that are needed. And we need to, we, we, our ambition is to obviously to answer these user needs on an open basis. Now, I talk a little bit about, is it, you know, if I'm good at this, should I keep it to myself and compete? Or should I share it? And, and how do I make, wh where's the boundary? Do we need common solutions or is it actually better to have private ones? And you do see a lot of that tension in the marketplace at the moment. How much should I invest on my own account? Where's my competitive edge? And how much is this actually just an expensive investment I'm not getting return for? So I, it, these are the perhaps classic... Um, time and, and uh, sort of resource demand curves and, and the sort of promise in this ideal situation of reduced effort and faster delivery is perhaps the, the expected nirvana from a CAD workflow to a BIM workflow. workflow. And, and what we're seeing and experiencing today is that actually instead of achieving this curve we get, get a bubble here and we could even revert to that later on. So, so there's a sort of danger here that, that people are either nervous, inexperienced, or, or making mistakes that are actually driving up costs at this stage in the game. And, and really what the goal is, is to capture a lot of what I would describe as digital best practice as electronic templates, effectively. And if, if we can create this bank of electronic templates or, or standards in, in, in other people's languages, we can have much more confidence in achieving this improved performance. So, so I think actually the, you know, there are significant benefits from open standards, but we have to work together to get them because you've got to believe here in this set of open standards. Just to, I know perhaps not all of you are familiar with, with the, sort of what Building Smart does and we have these standards, sort of the, this term, the IFC, is banded around. This is a simple analogy that I, that I hope sort of makes it sort of blindingly straightforward to people. But the, the point of this analogy is that we, we are all very familiar with you know, how to use these Androids and Apple phones nowadays, and we, we understand the concept of an operating system for a phone. And essentially, I sort of suggest that the, 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 the sort of open standards approach here, the IFC framework as a whole, is effectively uh, a, um, an operating system for the built asset industry. Uh, and you can think of, uh, of the, the IFC as that sort of the, co the kernel of that. You can think of the apps as MB MVDs, effectively the apps. So I want to know how to do a noise analysis or whatever. There's an MVD for that, an app for that. Uh, and then there's the sort of the data bank of information and resources in, in, the, in the data dictionary. So that's, that tries to make a very simple analogy to, to sort of explain to those people who are perhaps not close to the technology what we're doing. And then perhaps at the heart of, what, of, of our standards, there are sort of five very basic standards. Um, and the first one is to describe processes, the workflow processes. And the second one is for moving information around models. We need to do change coordination. We need to map terms. And we need to be able to digitize the processes. And, and those are the, so that's the fundamental framework um, which the perhaps early over the last 20 years has been created um, as one of the core building blocks on which to base and develop all the apps that we need in the future to address specific user needs. So where are we today? Well, in reality, I think we are, we're over here uh, on the left and we have to, to grow and strengthen the kernel. At the moment, we're extending it to infrastructure uh, and we're develop, doing work um, to, to then you know, develop work for, for bridges specifically. Uh, there's demand for an IFC for rail. 
So we're trying to build out the strength of the, the trunk of the tree. And if you think of all the, the leaves on this as effectively as, as the apps, the MVDs, then you understand we've got to flesh it out with a lot more functionality before everyday users really, get in, really understand how this works and the value of it. But the, the point is that if we, uh, if we don't have a way of doing this together, we end up with this blurred forest and clearly that doesn't help people very much at all. And so the role of building smart is to allow us to have that clear sort of oak tree as the centre of what we're doing rather than uh, a, sh a shrubland that, that, we, that never matures into something valuable. Coming back to, to building smart specifically then and, and you know, what we're doing. Building smart's role here is to enable the process of standardisation of solutions and to really to be the, a vehicle, or in this case a boat, to, 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 to deliver them to the uh, supranational standards bodies that set, set the rules for everybody. And we think it, it, if we can get the right set of standards established here, we will then in, ha, in have enabled the, right, the, the sort of productive environment that has been uh, you know, created if you, for the people who, who uh, set the standards for geospatial positioning. So we all know where we are nowadays with our, with our GPSs. That's, that's a standard that's op developed in a similar way uh, with, by a different organisation. But, but, the, but the methodology was the same, that it was developed in a, in a standardisation process and then delivered and executed through the global and supranational standards bodies. Uh, and this, this is illustrated here with Building Smart's position as... Um, an open industry standards body, working with industry to accelerate the availability and provision of common industry standards and then promoting their development and, uh, I suppose, establishment of, of ISO standards and then SEN or Asian standards as necessary. How are we doing that? We're, our sort of goal is to enable the full digital ways of working for the built asset industry. And I use those words quite carefully. Built asset industry for me includes infrastructure. Ways of working, digital ways of working is, I think, what we're really trying to do. Enable the use of data in everyday processes. Not PDFs, not paper, but real data. We have sort of three... We are at the moment trying to solve this virtuous circle of identification of needs, defining what they, need, they are, developing solutions and then deploying those solutions. And we have a, a user program that works in conjunction with a standards program and, and through the centre of compliance activity, checking. So we, we, we're seeking to become the standards body of reference for the built asset industry, that we want to have strong uh, in-country activities, uh, organisations, we call those chapters, and we want our quality mark to become recognised as the standard for the industry. So we sort of reset a strategy for how we're going to go forward in 2014 and, and that uh, and it has at its core these four elements and that we have become a membership organisation at, at the international level and that's important because we need uh, both to have a significant um, uh, executive team to, to run and develop the organisation and we need people who are really going to join together to fund and collaborate in both the working kind and in, and in real financial terms, to delivering the work programmes that are needed to take this programme forward. And I think when you've sort of seen that analogy of, of the tree and understand the range of, of apps that might be needed, enabling that marketplace, is, it's a non-trivial exercise. There are significant real sort of extensions and work infrastructure that has to be put in place to make this open standards framework usable to everybody in the way that perhaps iPhones are today. i would going to talk a little bit now about engagement because obviously we can't do this alone uh, and the, the big sort of, uh, the sort of unique proposition around Building Smart is that it is an industry-wide community and we seek to engage uh, in a, 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 with, with partners in all directions, in fact. But the, we have, uh, I think, strategic partnerships with, with ISO, with SEN formally and with OGSU, all formal relationships. The... Um, I would say all, in some ways, you know, the established relationships being tested and stretched now 
that the demand for BIM is increasing so much. Uh, and, and there are now competing voices and, and where people play and how we align people's thoughts to be efficient is one of the key challenges that I see that we face. We, d we don't want to have an, a, a sort of competitive environment between any of these and Building Smart. And, and there are lots of other that's it, associations there are, or, or, or special interest groups. You might think of Build Off Site or POSCAR in the oil and gas industry that, that we actually where we should be harnessing the activities of anybody who's prepared to, to work uh, you know, collaboratively to, into this common cause. So, so this engagement activity is important and our, our chapters have strong relationships with these uh, national programs. Uh, I know you've heard this morning from, from Frederic Plan and Bow 4.0 is, is the German program. Uh, Digitally Built Britain is obviously the, the, the UK program, which was, you know, got further government funding in, in the last budget round. So, so that sort of that program is sort of um, is extended and continues, and that's important. This is the Spanish program and the, the Dutch program, and it's very important to recognise that. that um, there's a lot of work being done in Korea in the development of the IFC for their own needs, and they are an active player and looking to bring some, uh, quite a significant amount of that work, particularly on roads, into the international arena. Uh, and I should also mention China, who don't have a formal programme as such, but are also doing a lot of work in the rail area. So, uh, so very interesting developments in Asia as well as Europe. I just want to... Uh, Spend a bit of time. This is our, our map of our chapters, and I think it's important to point out that this, this is a, we have a new Swiss chapter in January this year, uh, and that's a reflection of the growing interest uh, uh, around Europe. And we have a new uh, leader for our US chapter in BIM Forum, who have perhaps uh, unlike uh, the early chapters, which were very technically based at the core, the BIM Forum is, has, has a track record of reaching out and having strong user engagement. Uh, and, and I think we're trying to get this user engagement balanced with a, a strong technical program in the centre uh, organised so that we, we make sure that we have real connections with users in different countries around the world to remain relevant uh, and driving a strong technical program in the centre. Um, so that, that change is, is, is recent and, and important. Well, this is a, a map of our membership groups for Building Smart International rather than for any of the chapters in particular. Uh, the, the, we have a sort of strategic level of members who are, I suppose we see as, as core advisors. They help us you know, set our strategy direction uh, and um, are a key uh, uh, enabling resource for us. So uh, you know, I kind of want to publicly acknowledge Arup and Kojima who have come newly on to our council this year. We also have a, a group of um, international members. Uh, that's, that's members who are, uh, are both a member of international and a member of a number of our chapters. And obviously I'm very grateful for, for CoBuilder for being one of those members and pleased to be here today to reinforce that. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, what I, the standard class of membership which are the people who really want to have a technical interest and want to be involved directly in our programmes, be that the, uh, the, the standards programme or the compliance programme. And again, I point out the role of your you know, um, buildings authority here, uh, who have been long-term supporters of this initiative. And again, somebody I extend my thanks to. This is our organisation. So the... Um, we are sort of owned and organised, governed by the chapters, essentially. Uh, and we have an international council meeting. In fact, that's meeting in two weeks' time here in Oslo uh, this year. They, we have a, then a formal board, and, and they have the relationship with the Strategic Advisory Council, uh, an executive that I lead, and the programmes, the Standards, Compliance and User Programme. Um, so that's a, a sort of fairly straightforward. I'm just going to talk a little bit now about the sort of Try and give you a high-level view of the status of the IFC4. Because a lot of what we're doing is trying to get this developed and out into the marketplace as a practical, usable tool for everybody. Um, and so, the, obviously, the basic schema is an ISO standard, and we're now just upgrading that with the, the IFC4 addendum to uh, to bring in that next level of functionality. And the two sort of enabling MVDs 
have been defined and finished, and they are now standards within Building Smart. And uh, the next step then is to get to the certification process in place, and that's due to be launched in the summer this year. Uh, again, I know that's an important topic uh, here in Norway because it's becoming quite some pressure to get on and start using the IFC4. In terms of the IFC4 for infrastructure, we have a basic alignment standard that's been developed and again is published as a final standard. Uh, and then there is a, a quite significant program of work going on, A, to do some extensions to that basic alignment and to set out plans to, for uh, an IFC for asset management in, in infrastructure and to develop a, a roadmap for the road and rail work that has to be done. And that's expected to build quite strongly on the, Europe, the Korean and the Chinese work. So the significant activity in the infrastructure space, we probably have between 60 and 80 people working in our infrastructure rooms uh, at, our, at our technical uh, summits. Uh, and then on the change collaboration, the, this BCF, the BIM collaboration format, has an active community developing and enhancing that. Uh, they have regular hackathons and are regularly updating that, and I, I understand that's sort of being quite rigorously tested now as a very useful tool for people to work easily and fluently with the IFC. We... Oh, two minutes, okay then, right. So just quickly then, we have uh, these uh, domain groups and a range of activities in each of those. Um, so uh, quite a significant work program. Uh, this is a snapshot of that work program in terms of um, numbers uh, and uh, again, quite a quite a, a, an, I think an active list. These are a list of our sort of published standards and uh, again, this is obviously a list we want to grow and extend uh, well as, free, as quickly as we can. I want to sort of mention this this is my image of the, the data dictionary. I know with CoBuilder that there's a lot of um, understanding perhaps of the data dictionary here, but it is a very important tool to extend the functionality of the IFC. And um, for me, this is, this is a framework which is sort of the red bit of the parts provided by Building Smart on all the work that's been done there. And, and the blue are the bits developed by, by others. I'm just going to flick through that. I just want to make the point now on compliance that there is an active software compliance and certification program and a people competence for individuals is, is going on. Should I stop there? That, that, and a quick summary of the um, compliance work for um, IFC2s. There is an active list on our, our website. And I think I've covered that point. So I think really that's fine. So this is just emphasizing that we are an industry community. We're modeling ourselves on these organizations and we'd like you all to get involved, please. <laughs> please come along and sign up. Thank you very much.